Hi everyone, I'm Giovanni. Welcome back to another Cointelegraph interview. Today I'm joined by professional trader Alessio Rastani. Okay, Alessio, so let's get started with some charts. The Bitcoin chart, what is your point of view on the current situation in the Bitcoin market? Hi Giovanni, thanks for having me again on your, uh, on your program on Cointelegraph. Great to be here. Um, so about Bitcoin, the way I approach it is, uh, as I'm sure many people uh, are aware, um, I approach it through the Elliott Wave model. Uh, or Elliott wave theory. The reason, first of all, what is Elliott wave theory? Elliott wave, Elliott wave theory simply says, as, as this uh, standard chart shows, um, the standard model, that when price is trending, that price essentially moves in the direction of the major trend in five waves. So in other words, price moves in the direction of the trend in five waves, but if it goes against the trend, it moves in three waves. So in other words, counter trend moves are usually composed of three waves, uh, but in the direction of the major trend is five waves. Now, that essentially is what the Elliott wave theory is. And um, you can see from this chart, a bunch of numbers. By the way, each wave is subdivided into smaller waves as well. Now, the reason why we apply Elliott wave theory and the reason why it's useful is because it's the only method out there. It's the only chart analysis, the only way of analyzing charts out there that gives you context. It gives you an idea of where you are in the big picture. Nothing else will give you that. Uh, so in other words, if you want to know where are you in the big picture, are we at the beginning of a major trend? Are we at the end of a major trend? Uh, are we in the middle of that trend? Or are we, in a, are we about to start a correction? All of those questions can be answered for you to some degree of probability by Elliott wave theory. I'll give an example. Uh, for example, Giovanni, if you, uh, if you know that you're about to start a wave one and two, a wave one, then it tells you that you're potentially at the beginning of a major trend. If you know you're about to start the wave three, wave three is usually, wave three is usually the biggest, uh, I would say this, usually the strongest and most dynamic part of a trend. So knowing that you're at the start of a wave three is very important because that could prepare you for a big wave, a big move up in an uptrend, for example. And if, for example, if you think you're at the end of a wave five, then you should be getting ready for a major correction. So. Have a look at this chart that I've actually given you here. This is a Bitcoin by wave or should, should I say Bitcoin Elliott wave chart. What I've done here on this chart is to the best of my, um, well, to the best of my knowledge here, I've pointed out from 2011, from the beginning, from the very start of uh, the trend in Bitcoin, the uptrend here, but the bull market in Bitcoin, I've outlined the five waves here for Bitcoin, uh, going all the way back to 2011 to the present. Okay. Now, notice that that first major bull market, the first major move from 2011, 2012, all the way to 2013. That was a five wave move, which completed back in 2013. And then we had a bear market, as I'm sure you remember, Giovanni, anyone who watches this video right now will remember the bear market of 2013, 14, and then to the start of 15, 2015. That was an ABC corrective wave, as you can see there. Then from 2015, from January 2015, we had we started the major bull market. This is the one that took Bitcoin from about 100 bucks, 100, 130, all the way to nearly a $20,000 mark, but about just under 20,000. That was also a five wave move. Um, that was a wave three, by the way, wave three ended in 2017 in the famous peak of 2017. And then we had a bear market correction, an ABC wave four correction, as you can see there in the wave four, ended in, end, uh, at, the, at the end of 2018. And then from end of 2018, from start of 2019, we started a five wave move um, in, the, in the bigger wave five. By the way, the large wave counts are shown to you in red. The smaller wave counts are shown to you in white, and the magenta counts are the ABC waves. But it's the larger wave counts in red that I'm looking at at the moment, the larger red wave counts. But I think basically we're starting this next major wave five. I think, I think we're at the beginning of a wave five. And if I had to narrow it down, I would say we were potentially at the beginning of a wave three of a wave five. Many people thought that the crash of April to June was a bear market. I, I'm sure you heard this. Many people were saying that there was a bear market a few months ago, back in from April, the crash from April to June. But I disagreed. We said, no, it's not a bear market because we haven't broken market structure. Market structure was a 30,000, 29,000 levels. We never broke it because I said it was a wave four correction. This is how Elliott wave theory helps you. Because people who said we're in a bear market were forgetting that actually there was a high probability we were just completing a wave four 
of this major wave five, not an actual bear market. By the way, when this five wave move completes, then I'm expecting a bear market. Okay, that's interesting. So a bullish view overall regarding all time highs. Do you think that we are going to uh, break through the all time highs by the end of the year, according to this model that you just showed? It's a very good question, uh, Giovanni. Yes, I do think so. I think that uh, as far as the all time highs of Bitcoin, which were formed back in April, just near 64,000, I think it was. So as long as Bitcoin remains above the September lows, um, which I think were about 40K, approximately 40, 41K. So as long as Bitcoin remains above that September low, the odds are higher that Bitcoin could make all time highs likely by the end of this year. And here's another reason, seasonality. It's what's called the Halloween effect. My research shows that the period between the end of October, October 31st, to the end of December is a bullish period, not just for the stock market, but also for Bitcoin. So now, of course, seasonality is not a guarantee. Uh, people often think that seasonality is, a, is like a sure thing, that definitely we're going to go higher or it's definitely it's bullish. No, it's a, it's a probability. Uh, I would say the probability is higher than 50%. So it's a very good probability. But all the studies show that as long as Bitcoin remains above the 200 moving average, daily 200 moving average, um, the odds are higher for Bitcoin to move potentially higher, making all time highs between October 31st, Halloween and the end of the year. OK, that was pretty clear. So now let's switch to Ethereum. So a lot of eyes are pointing to Ethereum this year because it has been uh, outperforming Bitcoin for most of the year. Uh, what is your view on Ethereum currently? Uh, I'll make my analysis on Ethereum very quick because my main focus is usually on Bitcoin. But essentially, I think that Ethereum um, also is going to benefit. I think Ethereum, one of the things that's interesting is Ethereum has not yet confirmed, as I'm making this, as, as we're making this video, but I mean, it could change by the time people are watching this, but at the time we're making this video, Ethereum has not yet confirmed the breakout above the uh, September highs, although uh, maybe that will, that will change soon. But Bitcoin has made, Bitcoin has taken out of September highs. Ethereum hasn't done that just yet, at the moment anyway. I think once Ethereum confirms that, once Ethereum takes out the September highs, that also would be a very bullish factor. So I always like to combine Bitcoin and Ethereum together to, to get a better uh, probability. Put it this way, if Bitcoin is gonna go to 100,000, which I think is likely by, the, by next year, um, then I think the probabilities are that Ethereum is likely to go, well, my targets for Ethereum would, would also be for next year, or maybe perhaps by the end of this year, would be 6,280, 6, Again, these are my targets more likely to be next year, but 2022. Uh, but let's say 6,280, uh, 7,800, and then 12,250. Uh, some people may think these targets are rather conservative, uh, rather tame, but I'm gonna, keep it, I'm gonna keep it modest and conservative. So that's 6,280, 7,800, and 12,250, potentially by the end of next year for Ethereum. And if Ethereum were to drop below the September lows, which I think carries a lower probability, but if that were, hap hap if that were to happen, then I would have to change my mind about those targets uh, potentially, because that would, change, that would change the structure of the charts. But those are my targets as long as Ethereum remains above the September lows. There are news coming out lately that uh, a Bitcoin ETF might be approved soon. There are several of them that are being uh, considered by the SEC currently. So what is your view on this issue? There are some analysts that say that this is um, going to be uh, not a game changer since there are already a lot of access uh, to Bitcoin investments for institutions as well. So it's not going to be a game changer as some people tend to believe. What is your view on this uh, uh, ETF approval? Uh, what kind of effect might have on, on Bitcoin? I think it's going to be bad news for Bitcoin. Um, put it this way. Um, let me explain why. So whenever Wall Street or whenever um, the institutions bring out an ETF on anything, that's a warning sign. It's a big warning sign to get ready for something terrible, get ready for something dangerous. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying as soon as, as, soon as the ETF comes out that Bitcoin is going to crash or I'm going to get out. That's not what I'm saying. I just hope the ETF won't come out before Bitcoin hits 100, 100K. I'm hoping it's going to come out after Bitcoin hits 100K. Because in the past, whenever an ETF has come out on most things, on almost anything, you see, usually a top forms, 
uh, usually a major top forms in that market. And we see a bear market or a crash occur in that market. Um, I, could num I could name a few things. In 2000, and I don't know when it was, but in 2008, 2009, um, after the major Wall Street crash of 2008, the, the major recession, what happened was this. Uh, Wall Street came out with an ETF for volatility, for the VIX, I think it was. Now, I, I forget the year exactly. I think it was late 2008, the beginning of 2009. But that was exactly when, essentially, when the stock market bottomed and it went up. What I'm trying to say is Wall Street saw a lot of people were putting their money into volatility index markets. So they thought, oh, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make an ETF for, for people who want volatility. What happened? That was about the time when the stock market bottomed and when volatility topped. So in other words, it was about the time when the markets reversed direction. In other words, uh, and actually, there's a lot of research on this, that whenever an ETF is brought out on something or, if, or a futures contract on something, usually it's a warning sign of an extreme reaching in a specific market, a, a turning point, an inflection point. I'll give you another example, Giovanni. Uh, I think it was late 2017 when Wall Street brought out the futures for Bitcoin, Bitcoin futures. I think that was late 2017, probably de December 2017. But that was about the time when Bitcoin topped, um, when there was a temporary top at the 19,000, 20,000 level, and then it crashed. So my point is, anytime Wall Street brings out something, whether it's a futures contract for something or ETF or something, it's a huge warning. It means be careful and be, get ready for something, get potential a potential inflection point, turning, a turning point might be getting, uh, might be approaching. All right, that's an interesting perspective, quite, uh, I would say, uh, counterintuitive, but let's see how it goes. Uh, let's uh, then wrap up the discussion with my last question, which is related to one of your predictions. So you predicted that a bear market for the stock market uh, may be coming soon. So uh, what time frame are we, are we looking at? Uh, why do you think that the bear market is coming and what kind of effects that is going to have on Bitcoin? Let me say that I'm not expecting a bear market this year. I've made that very clear even last year. I'm not expecting a bear market this year. I think a bear market in Bitcoin and the stock market is likely coming potentially towards uh, maybe in the next couple of years. So uh, according to Jason Geppert of Sentiment Trader, he says that there's a rising probability of bear market and deteriorating macro conditions. And he says that whenever there's a, whenever the spread between bear market probability and macro index models increases over 20%, uh, as, as, as shown here by this chart, then there is a very high probability of a bear market. In fact, we've seen before when this happens, 2007, bear market occurred afterwards. 2000, then we had a dot-com crash, the dot-com bubble uh, burst. In 1990, the famous 1990s recession, 1980, 1973, 1969. Every time when this model shows a signal going over 20%, this shows a rising probability of a bear market. Um, and I, again, uh, thank, I, have to, I have to give thanks to Jason uh, for that research. But the bottom line is, I think that the, uh, from a technical perspective and from an economic perspective and even a fundamentalist perspective, everything is looking uh, likely that, again, not this year, not, not 2021, but potentially the next couple of years, um, we could very well see a major top in not just the stock markets, but also Bitcoin as well. Because as we've seen in the past, usually when the stock market crashes and goes into a bear market, it has a negative impact also on Bitcoin. When the stock market crashes, Bitcoin may also crash and drop as well, is because both are risk on markets. Stock markets and Bitcoin are risk on markets. When there's an appetite for risk, both markets go up. But when there's low appetite, when there's little appetite for risk, they go down. So when investors and traders when they fear risk increasing and they potentially fear losing money on you know, markets dropping, then they, they typically sell both stock markets and stocks and Bitcoin. In fact, there's a theory that perhaps Bitcoin gets sold um, to cover their losses. Uh, you know, when traders lose money in stock markets, they may sell their Bitcoin wallets, <laughs> empty it out to s offset their losses in other markets. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a good news uh, for Bitcoin when that bear market comes. Yeah, actually, we saw that exact scenario happening last year when there was the coronavirus outbreak. We saw the stock market crashing and Bitcoin uh, crashing. Good point, Giovanni. You're absolutely right, Giovanni. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, thank, thanks a lot, Alessio, for coming on our show. That was super cool to talk to you. Thanks very much, Giovanni. And again, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.